September 17th, 2022. I'm house sitting for my grandmother who is on a little mini vacation and I'm doing laundry for my sister because our washing machine is broken. So I'm going to the car to take her some clean laundry. I see a caterpillar under my car and it was not moving and it looked dead and I don't know why I didn't take a picture but I poked it with something I don't remember what and it moved and it started freaking out and running so I grabbed an empty water bottle that was in my car and I put it inside of it and I took it home and that is the beginning <laughs> Hylis lineata, Hylis for the Greek centaur, and lineata, Latin for line, the white line sphinx, more commonly known as the hummingbird moth and sometimes the hawk moth. Naturally, one would try to get the caterpillar into a more comfortable environment that is in a plastic water bottle with no ventilation, with food and proper accommodations. So I embarked on a frantic search across Wikipedia, YouTube, and the internet at large, trying to find what it eats. I saw several people giving them grass and just random leaves, and Wikipedia told me that they eat tomato, but said nothing of roses. They also pupate in dirt. So armed with this knowledge, I prepared a mason jar with dirt, some sticks, tomato leaves, and grass. Of course, the caterpillar did not eat anything and only tried to escape for the next two days. By the end of the second day, it was very lethargic and wasn't moving and I was freaking out. So I start scouring YouTube again, trying to find all of the low view videos because none of the high view videos were giving me any good information. And I come across a video of someone cutting open the tomatoes and giving it to their caterpillars. Of course, I gave it the wrong part of the plant. Isn't it wonderful when you're entrusted with a creature that the Lord made? The problem is, I knew nothing, absolument rien de tout, about this creature. And that was a little scary and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth genesis 1 26 to 28. That's a lot of responsibility. As soon as it came into contact, the caterpillar eagerly partook of the tomato, and over time its movements became less lethargic and more invigorated. After imbibing the tomato for a few minutes, the caterpillar began to look around for another food source. Venue change! Wet paper towel inside of a Tupperware with lots of food. By this time, I had also found out that they eat rose leaves as well so I went to the back and acquired some of my mother's rose leaves. Et voila! Success! The rose must have been the caterpillar's host plant because after that it would eat nothing else. Not even a tomato. thing ate and grew and grew and ate and oh would you look at the mess that it made. Good thing I decided to also change out its container while I was figuring out how to feed it. And right after cleaning out its container, it decided to bless us with the wonderful vision of defecation. science. A 
Apparently, if you try to pry a caterpillar off of whatever it's holding on to, its legs will rip off before it'll let go. Sounds incredibly fun. Anyways, the beast was getting fat, and I did not want it to not be able to pupate on a paper towel, so I decided to move it back to the mason jar. Take a shot every time she says I decided. As we neared the end of the caterpillar's life, it became more tired and would rest for longer periods more frequently. I forgot to mention this earlier, but the caterpillar was very cold all the time, as an insect would be, but it is very striking how cold a living thing can be. Yes, yes, the mason jar looks too small. I thought so too. So I decided to trade it out for a bigger container. I was hesitant to at first because I didn't want to take up kitchen resources, but my mother said it was okay. So here we are. I am embarrassed to say that for a hot second, I thought this webbed leaf was the pupa. <laughs> so apparently the soil has to be moist. Oh. Yes, the beast would not burrow because the soil was completely dry. I thought my work was done. The beast had stopped eating, was plenty fat, and had ample dirt. But no, it wasn't wet dirt. Talk about a crash course in caterpillar zoology. Yes, I put more leaves after, just in case, just in case. After barely moving when the dirt was dry, the caterpillar began to run around the glass, um, kind of frantically. And I wasn't too worried because I had seen this behavior on a YouTube video, but I did question if I had put too much water. The beast also appeared to be eating the soil several times. I went to bed about 30 minutes later and it was still running around, but when I woke up in the morning, the beast was gone.